welcome to all for this next lecture of home and home will so up till now we have covered the terminology basic parts of the home and home will force analysis few examples geometrical relationships uh, coming to the next part of the home and home will so once again first of dr ezi gulkani from singhagad institute so here now we are going to cover the friction in worm and worm so, so for this lecture we are going to cover the friction and efficiency in case of worm and worm wheel is it okay so uh, basically if we look to this figure then this dotted portion shown here it is worm and this longer portion which is shown here that is the worm wheel so we may consider this as one kind of top view from which this worm and worm wheels are observed so this is worm and this one is worm wheel is it okay so v1 is considered as pitch line velocity of the worm which is expressed in terms of meter per second and v2 is considered to be pitch line velocity of worm wheel that is also considered in terms of meter per second is it okay so it has been observed that coefficient of friction in worm gear drives depends on rubbing speed now what is the rubbing speed that we initially understand if v1 is the pitch line velocity of the worm and v2 is the pitch line velocity of the worm wheel then the resultant of this v1 and v2 which is considered as vs so here we can observe this particular triangle right angle triangle so v1 pitch line velocity of the worm v2 pitch line velocity of the worm wheel and vs is the rubbing velocity which is also in meter per second then this vs is considered to be rubbing velocity okay and always the angle between v1 and vs is gamma so gamma is lead angle so the statement is given here it is it is observed that coefficient of friction in worm gear drives depends on rubbing speed so already we are familiar with this worm and worm wheel as having surface contacts and more friction happens in between worm and worm wheel as compared to other gear drives and that's why this particular friction that should be taken into consideration as a part of a design process and uh, that is considered here so for that purpose the rubbing speed is the relative velocity between worm and worm wheel it's okay so this particular rubbing speed that is the resultant of v1 and v2 that is initially taken into consideration in order to accommodate the effect of friction in worm gear then as usual the uh, v1 if it is pitch line velocity then it is given as pi d and divided by 60 in case of uh, worm we are using the terminology v1 as pitch line velocity of the worm then it is pi d1 n1 upon 16 to 10 raised to 3 as we are considering this in meter per second this 10 raised to 3 we are using here then d is the diameter n is the speed so v1 is equal to pi d1 n1 upon 16 to 10 raised to 3 similarly v2 is also uh, calculated uh, here with reference to this v1 we may calculate vs means if suppose we are taking here cos gamma in this triangle if we take the cos gamma then cos gamma is equal to v1 upon vs so cos gamma is equal to v1 upon vs so vs is equal to v1 upon cos gamma okay so sliding velocity based on v1 that is pitch line velocity of the worm is calculated so v1 is pi d1 n1 upon 16 to 10 raised to 3 and vs is v1 upon cos gamma now one more uh, thing we will have to add here that if this particular graph we are observing so sliding velocity already we have calculated based on v1 so which is taken here on this x axis and on y axis there is coefficient of friction so if we observe this particular figure this particular graph then we will come to know that if we know the rubbing velocity or rubbing speed which is taken into meter per second then this particular coefficient of friction we can identify means in case of rubbing velocity 0 0.005 then corresponding value of coefficient of friction is 
जीरो पॉइंट वन इन केस इफ इट इज जीरो पॉइंट ट्वेंटी फाइव रविंग वेलॉसिटी इज जीरो पॉइंट ट्वेंटी फाइव मीटर पर सेकंड देन दिस इज दॉन्डिंग वैल्यू नियर टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स दिस इज दिफिशियंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन जीरो की इन जनरल वी कैन टेक एनी एग्जाम्पल सपोज टू पॉइंट फाइव मीटर पर सेकंड इज द रबिंग वेलॉसिटी देन करस्पॉन्डिंग वैल्यू ऑफ कोफिशियंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री सो कोफिशियंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड बेस्ड ऑन दिस रबिंग थ्रेड सो दिस पार्ट वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज हाउ टू कंसिडर द म्यू हाउ टू कंसिडर हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई द म्यू दैट शुड बी नोन देन नेक्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव टू स्टडी इन दिस लेक्चर दैट इज द इफिशियंसी ऑफ वॉम गियर ड्राइव सो जनरली इफिशियंसी ऑलवेज वी आर राइटिंग आवर वी आर फैमिलियर विद द फॉर्म्यूला दैट इफिशियंसी इज ऑलवेज इक्वल टू आउटपुट अपॉन इनपुट इफिशियंसी इन दिस केस वी आर कंसिडर एज पावर आउटपुट डिवाइडेड बाय पावर इनपुट सो इन जनरल फॉर्म्यूला ऑफ इफिशियंसी वी हैव यूज हेयर पावर वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंसिडर्ड एज टू पाई एन एम टी डिवाइडेड बाय सिक्सटीन टू टेन रेज टू सिक्स सो टू पाई एन एम टी डिवाइडेड बाय सिक्सटीन टू टेन रेज टू सिक्स आउट ऑफ सिक्सटीन टू टेन रेज टू सिक्स इज कॉमन फॉर ऑल दैट विल गेट कैंसल टू पाई एन एम टी इन साइड विच टू पाई दैट इज ऑल्सो कॉमन विच विल गेट कैंसल सो एन एंड एम टी दैट आर रिमेनिंग सो दिस इज एन टू एंड दिस इज एन वन एन टू रिप्रेजेंट्स द स्पीड ऑफ or rpm we may consider here the revolutions per minute rpm of worm wheel and n1 is uh, rpm of worm so always uh, worm is driver in most of the cases frequently worm is driver and worm wheel is driven so that's why input is considered to the worm and output is considered to the worm wheel is it okay 2 pi n mt divided by 16 to 10 raised to 6 out of which remaining term is mt and n other terms are common that's why they get cancel to each other and mt that we know that this is tangential component of force so p2 t into d2 by 2 so torque is always equal to tangential component of force into radius so radius is given as d2 upon 2 so p2 t into d2 by 2 that is the m t in case of worm wheel and this is p1 t into d1 by 2 is the m t in case of worm is it okay so this particular power output so the power into input this particular ratio is given here as efficiency uh, now let us substitute here this n2 upon n1 that transmission ratio Uh, i we are taking as n1 upon n2 always we have defined the value of i as n1 upon n2 but here it is n2 upon n1 that's why we are uh, taking the reciprocal of this i that's why n2 upon n1 is equal to 1 upon i then second term here it is d2 upon d1 so d2 upon d1 is equal to m z2 upon m q so this is d2 is the uh, diameter of the worm with d1 is the diameter of worm and these diameters are always expressed in terms of modules so d2 is equal to m into z2 and d1 is equal to m into q this m is uh, can get cancel here so z2 upon q for that we have divided by z1 for numerator as well as denominator we are dividing by z1 then here we are getting z2 upon z1 here we are getting q upon z1 so z2 upon z1 once again we will consider here this is the transmission ratio which is equal to i and uh, already we are familiar with the tan gamma so tan gamma is equal to z1 upon q so here q upon z1 which is in the denominator which becomes equal to tan gamma is it so this is 1 upon tan gamma which becomes equal to tan gamma so tan gamma is z1 upon q that's why this particular uh, value z2 upon z1 divided by q upon z1 we are writing in terms of i tan gamma okay so let us substitute this b and c equation in equation a so by substituting equation b and equation c in equation a here this efficiency becomes equal to p2 t upon p1 t into this d2 upon d1 this particular ratio i tan gamma and this n2 upon n1 is equal to 1 upon i i will get cancel only remaining term is 
tan gamma. So this efficiency becomes equal to uh, P1A upon P1T because we know that the tangential component of course in case of worm wheel is equal to axial component of force in case of worm. So that's why this P2T is uh, replaced by P1A. So efficiency is given as P1A upon P1T into tan gamma. Is it okay? So P1A upon P1 T axial component of force in case of worm tangential component of force in case of worm into tan gamma. Is it okay? So efficiency is given as tan gamma into ratio of P2 T upon P1 T which is already in case of force analysis we have seen that this particular ratio we are writing as cos alpha cos gamma minus nu sin gamma divided by cos alpha sin gamma plus nu cos gamma. So this particular ratio of these two forces in force analysis this particular equation we have studied and in simplified manner if we substitute here uh, tan gamma is equal to sin gamma upon cos gamma and if we multiply here then with this uh, simplified manner so rearranging the terms uh, suppose sin gamma upon cos gamma then cos gamma is divided here so by dividing this term by cos gamma, cos gamma will cancel and this sin gamma will become tan gamma. So here cos alpha minus mu tan gamma and sin gamma is present here. So sin gamma, sin gamma cancel here. So here it will become cos alpha and sin gamma divided by cos alpha here uh, this cos alpha divided by this sin uh, gamma. So cos gamma divided by this sin gamma will become quad gamma. So likewise this efficiency become equal to cos alpha minus mu tan gamma divided by cos alpha plus mu cot gamma is it okay so this is the equation for the efficiency we should understand this particular efficiency and this particular coefficient of friction these two terms are very important in order to take into consideration the effect of friction and identify the efficiency so one more term we should understand with the help of efficiency which is associated with the efficiency of worm gear drive that is Efficiency of spur and helical gear is very high, virtually constant and in the range of 98 to 99 percent. But in case of worm gear, it is in between 50 percent to 98 percent. So in general, worm drive is self-locking because of worm wheel cannot drive the worm. So motion will transfer from worm to worm drive, but from worm drive to worm, this particular motion will not get transferred. In that case we are considering this particular assembly as a self-locking type. So worm gear drive is said to be self-locking if the coefficient one more analogy we are considering here if this is the coefficient of friction and if this is the tan gamma then if mu is greater than tan gamma then this condition we are considering the condition of self-locking. So if the coefficient of friction is greater than tangent of lead angle then we are considering worm gear drive as a self-locking type. Is it okay? So the friction angle is more than lead angle. It is considered here. Now one more term which is associated here that is reversible or overrunning or back driving worm gear drive. So if motion is transferred from worm to worm wheel and if worm wheel to worm again reversible then this will be considered as reversible type. So in this type of drive worm and worm wheel can drive each other. In general, worm is driver and worm wheel is driven, but in this case, opposite side also it is possible. But most of the cases, worm is driver. If driver machinery has large inertia and if driving power supply is cut off suddenly, the worm freely driven by the worm wheel, so it will not self lock. Motion is possible from opposite side and this will prevent the damage of drive because, in case of self locking, there is chances of uh, damage of the drive. Uh, worm gear drive is said to be reversible if the coefficient of friction is less than tangent of lead. Means opposite case here we have seen that if mu is greater than tan gamma then it is self locking and if it is opposite case if mu is less than tan gamma then it is reversible type. Is it okay? So these concepts we should understand clearly that is what is meant by a coefficient of friction how it is calculated with based on rubbing speed how to calculate the efficiency and what is meant by reversible and irreversible and self-locking case. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Thank you.